Uh, now let's see if there is, if we really completely mess up for Earth, is there any place uh, for us in the solar system? Can we escape somewhere? Like, is there any other planet where we can live just like we have on Earth? So let's talk about the solar system a little bit. As you know, all bodies in the solar system were created at the same time and from the same general material, which is hydrogen and helium. Uh, and it happened about 4.5 billion years ago, and I have already talked about it. Uh, it's important that you know that the center of the solar system is the sun. Sun is The sun is our, uh, our star, and this, it's a star, therefore it generates heat by nuclear fusion inside of it. It's the largest body in the solar system. It contains about 98% of, um, of the mass of the whole solar system. And the solar energy created deep, deep into in the, in the sun's uh, inner body where the temperature and the pressure is high enough for nuclear reactions to take place. Uh, as you know, we can already do nuclear um, reactions like fusion. Um, however, it requires so high pressure and temperature that it's very, very expensive, so we cannot really do too much about it yet. Uh, the, the sun is surrounded with the planets, and I have this picture here which shows all nine of them, and we already, I mean, um, Pluto is, is not considered a planet right now, so, but I just love that picture there anyway, so don't worry about it. The sun has a gravitational force, which is large enough to um, keep all the planets orbiting it, and they orbit the sun on the same plane, and we call the ecliptic. On this figure, you can also see the axis of each planet, and you can see the obliquity of them. The obliquity is the, the angle uh, of the axis relative to the north. So as you can see, Earth has 23 degrees, and uh, there are very different angles here, so you can look at it. You don't have to know it, it's just interesting. So let's talk about the planets. This, this uh, slide shows you the, the planets, actually. We divide them into two major groups. One is the inner planets. Those are the ones closest to the sun, and the other group is the outer planets. The Outer planets are all gaseous planets, and the inner planets are rather like Earth, so they have rocky surfaces, most of them has atmosphere and stuff like that. We're going to start talking about the inner planets or terrestrial planets, uh, and even if I woke you up, your best sleep or anything you might imagine happening to you, you still have to know them in order. Like, here is the sun right here. So the closest to the Sun is Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So you have to know them. They do have dense, compact, rocky surfaces, so you could walk on them all. And they have significant atmosphere, except the Mercury. Now, why do you think the Mercury doesn't have atmosphere? Yeah, you're right if you thought that it's because it's too close to the Sun, so it's really, really hot, which means the atmosphere have evaporated away because, because of the hot temperature. So let's start with the mercury. Mercury has almost no atmosphere, and the reason for it is because it's too hot, so it evaporated. But whatever is left there is mostly hydrogen and helium. Uh, so if you were standing on the mercury and look at the sky, it would look always black, which is very depressing. If you think about if mercury would be a place for us to live. The other thing is that it has a lot of meteorite craters on the surface. Definitely there is no water or anything like that. So there is no soil. You cannot grow anything. And um, obviously because it's so close to the sun, it's extremely hot, extremely hot. If you look at the next slide, I have a couple of interesting facts about the mercury. You do not have to know them, but uh, it's interesting. So just go through and read and look at it. Each planet, I have the same slide I copied from NASA. The second one is the Venus. Venus is also called the jewel of the sky uh, because it has thick... Uh, swirling clouds so from the from the satellites it looks beautiful 
uh, it is called the Earth Sister because it has similar size, density, and volume. However, the composition of, of especially the atmosphere is very, very, very different. Uh, it doesn't have any water and it has a very thick CO2 atmosphere, carbon dioxide. If you think about uh, the carbon dioxide, would that be okay for us to live on, on uh, Venus? Just think about what do we breathe in? What do we breathe out? If you thought of what do we breathe in would be oxygen, that would be the right answer. And what we breathe out, that's carbon dioxide, and that is the right answer. So when you have a uh, carbon dioxide rich atmosphere, what would happen to you when you're trying to breathe in? Yes, you're breathing in stuff which, which you should breathe out instead of breathing in, so you couldn't live in a CO2 rich atmosphere for too long. On the other, on the other hand, if you read this, the atmospheric pressure is 92 atmosphere. Um, how would it feel to be in a 92? It wouldn't feel much because you die right away. You die right as soon as you stepped out of that space shuttle. You'd be died there because it's really uh, bad gas to breathe in. It has very high temperature. It's 482 degrees Celsius, which is really, really, really high. If you think about the chicken is cooking around 250 Celsius, so 400, 480 really would kill you, like you burn up like a, an overcooked chicken in a minute. And a 92 atmosphere, if you think about the earth at the ocean has an atmosphere of one, one. So the 92 would be 92 more times pressure, so just think of it. You'd be crashed, burned, and couldn't breathe. So. Venus definitely is not the place for us to be. Um, so let's go further. Is there anything else for us out there? And there is this um, there is this other slide about the Venus, just like I showed you on the Mercury. So if you want more interesting fact, you could read this uh, and you'd learn about it. Um, on the test, what, how much do you have to know about each planet? If you look at the slides, like this one, if you know like two th thing out of this, you're good to go. Okay, the next planet is Earth. And I don't have anything here because we're gonna learn about Earth the whole semester. So just know that it's, it's um, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and now it's gonna come Mars. And it's com commonly referred as the red planet. It has a CO2 rich atmosphere with very very low amount of oxygen so remember this is again a co2 rich atmosphere which doesn't it's not very good for us if you think about it because we already talked in terms of the venus that co2 rich atmosphere is not very good however um we can take care of it just think about what do we have to put on um mars before we would get up there what is what makes us oxygen from co2 And we can do that, actually. If you answered plants, planting plants, that was a very good answer because plants need CO2 and water and they use that while they're photosynthesizing and making sugar and oxygen. You should know that that's photosynthesis. This is how plants are making food out of non-living material. All you need is just water, CO2, and the sunlight and they make oxygen and sugar that's why we eat plant because they made the food for us from inorganic material so if you put plants on mars you can actually turn the atmosphere into more oxygen rich from the co2 rich atmosphere now look at the temperature the temperature is minus 62 degrees celsius that's very cold that's the problem you cannot really put plants up if the temperature is that cold. Um, probably you know that Mars is a frozen planet. I mean, our technology has to develop enough that actually we can melt the ice caps. It has two very well developed ice caps. So if they can melt it somehow, I don't know how, I don't know how then then we could plant plants there and then they could change their atmosphere. So this is the 
this is a possibility here, possibly, but the minus 62 degrees south is very cold. So right as it is, um, Mars is not really a choice we have. Um, here is this slide on the Mars, so you can see uh, the details about stuff, if you want to know about the inside structure and stuff like that, it's interesting, but I won't ask it. And these are a couple of pictures which shows and seems like to prove that there used to be water on Mars. Uh, these are definitely like um, ripple marks and raindrops and river systems. However, since it's a frozen planet, the water is all frozen into the polar caps, ice caps. So basically, none of the terrestrial planet could be a future place for us to live. So let's go further and see what else is out there for us these are the outer or jovian planets uh these are the jupiter saturn uranus and neptune and those are the four which count as planet in the outer planetera and they look like jupiter or most of them are jupiter like that's why we call them jovian uh, they are ga gas mostly and we believe that some of them might have solid core so therefore, none of them are good for us because we cannot walk on gas. So therefore, the only place we have to live right as we know today is Earth. So it's extremely important that we take sustainable development seriously and that, um, that we try to make Earth in inhabitable as long as possible. It is very important. So I'll come back in the next segment. See ya.